and now works in the substance abuse part of our team, and is a man in recovery and been a heroin addict and a gang member and tattooed, stood up and he said very offhandedly, you know, I guess I could say that you, my mom and me, we didn't get along so good. I guess I was six when she looked at me and she said, why don't you just kill yourself? You're such a burden to me. The whole audience gasped. And then he said, uh, and then he said, well, it sounds way worse in Spanish. <laughs> and everyone laughed. And then he said, you know, I guess I was nine when my mom drove me down to the deepest part of Baja, California, and she walked me up to this orphanage and she said, I found this kid. And then he said, I was there 90 days until my grandmother could get me out of where she had dumped me and she came and rescued me. And then he told the audience, my mom beat me every single day. In fact, I had to wear three t-shirts to school every day. And then he sort of lost his battle with his own tears. And he said, I wore three t-shirts even into adulthood because I was ashamed of my wounds. I didn't want anybody to see them, but now my wounds are my friends. I welcome my wounds. I run my fingers over my wounds. He looked at the crowd and he said, how can I help the wounded if I don't welcome my own wounds? And awe came upon everyone. We are the wounded, and we are the healers, and this is why we follow Jesus. When we think of our favorite Bible verses or stories, I would be surprised if any one of us named Jeremiah's story of the potter, smashing clay. Any one of us would call the cost of discipleship in Luke our favorite, or even Jesus' sacrifice in the Philippians one of our favorites. These aren't easy passages, nor are they straightforward. But they are an up-close encounter with God, Creator, Son, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, Convictor, and Guide. It's really a come-unto-Jesus moment. So rather than take my word for it, I invite you to look back at our questions. What is discipleship? What is our motivation and God's motivation? How is discipleship made real? And why engage at it at all? How does the finished cup look like with God in our story? Our favorite Bible verse, verses and stories tend to guide us and to offer us a lens by which we see the world. What would happen if we claimed these passages for a time, letting them focus our lives and relationship with God? You might be encouraged to expand who you are and who you call family. You might be encouraged to seek what God is about, to use anger or other passions to fuel following Christ. You might be encouraged to put on your shoes every day and step out that front door. You might be encouraged to see that God did it too. He did it first and is with you all the way. You might be encouraged to touch your wounds with love in order to heal. I pray whatever the Holy One wants us to know to transform our hearts, we have the courage to embrace it this day. Will you pray with me? not so much my words, God, that I want to penetrate our hearts, but your message, your Holy Spirit calling us, tugging at us, reminding us of who we are, 
reminding us that even in our woundedness that we are also healers because you are too. You are the wounded healer that continues to heal our souls. Whatever the message is that you have for us this day, God, may it penetrate deep. May it reside there in such a way that it changes us, transforms us, makes us, makes for us the way of life that you would call us to live. Give us the courage. Give us the ability. Give us the grace for this journey. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.